Today we're going to go over a very basic dissection of a bullfrog and we'll be looking at some of the external anatomy, opening up the mouth, eventually uh, cutting into the body cavity and identifying several of the organ systems. But this will be an overview, give you a little bit of uh, what you've got to expect whenever you do this in junior high and high school. And uh, all around, kind of an intro to dissections. So today we have a fairly standard bullfrog. This is about a foot long and you can pick these up at just about any scientific supply. Uh, knowing if they're male or female, just looking externally, usually the males will have a larger pad there on the front legs. Uh, you usually have to have several of the frogs to actually compare though. A good indicator of having a female would be a very distended belly. Uh, if they have lots of eggs inside of them, the skin is usually protruding, it's often, often solid, and uh, what you'll find as you cut into it will be just a mass of tiny, tiny eggs. Just, we're talking about thousands of them. So today I believe it's a male. We'll find out here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and start with your external features. Externally, this all looks fairly familiar. We have our standard tetrapod body plan, two arms, two legs, your cranium housing, a very small brain, some eyes, some nostrils, and the mouth. We've all seen it before, we've grown up with this kind of thing, but as they are amphibians, we're gonna see some differences from these guys and our mammalian counterparts. Starting out with the skin, and you'll see that most frogs out in the wilderness uh, are gonna have very moist skin. This is an incredibly adapted and specialized membrane, uh, more so than our skin, which allows things to stay protected, bad things stay out, good things stay in, for an amphibian, salamander, or frog, this is an organ for breathing, quite literally. Across the surface, across the entire frog, 40 to 60, 70 percent of what we do as far as breathing happens across this membrane. We're talking about the oxygen and the CO2 out, what we usually do with our mouth and our lungs. As humans, the majority of this is done in amphibians on the outside. So already you've got some neat semi-aquatic adaptations. If you look here on the side of the head, in place of what we usually see as ears, you'll see a round, almost armor-plated area. This is called the tympanic membrane, or tympanum, and this is pretty much the analog to our ears. This is how they actually hear, and they can do it underwater as well. So another semi-aquatic or aquatic adaptation. Uh, the eyelids are closed right now, but whenever open them up and look inside you will find a secondary eyelid it's actually transparent and it's called the nictating membrane so again lots of specialization different from what we have you have external nares which we usually call uh, your nostrils the mouth and the only other difference that we're really going to find here from uh, our mammals externally is uh, back here in the back and this is called the cloaca and for these guys, amphibians, they have a single hole that does it all. Uh, as far as excreting waste, your urine, uh, your solid waste, as well as sexual reproduction, it all occurs in the same area, in the same hole. So a little bit of a difference there. Let's go ahead and uh, open up the mouth right now, and we'll start on some of the parts and pieces therein. So opening the mouth is uh, fairly straightforward. First off, what I usually instruct my students to do is go ahead and pin the arms and legs and you will have either T-pins or needles that'll work uh, for this. Sometimes you'll actually have to break the arms. It's a gruesome thing, it's not a fun thing, but it's a necessary thing when it comes to dissections. Whenever you put needles in, make sure that you put them in at an angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down, go in through the arm as far as I can go. Go at an angle if I can, and hopefully that'll keep the arm out of the way. And if I'm uh, cutting on this creature, it'll keep him from moving around on the plate while I do so. Uh, doing the other arm, right through the palm, and that'll work for that. Go ahead and secure your other sides. So opening the mouth is fairly straightforward. 
uh, you just want to be careful when you do it. I've seen a lot of people try and do it with a knife and I would caution against that. The best tool I've found for the job would be your simple surgical scissors. You can actually open it up first and uh, because it's been dead for a while it's probably going to fight you a bit. It's not going to want to open. Notice I'm using some muscle here and it's still shutting on me. And uh, what I'm going to do is take the scissors going through the side of the mouth and I'm going to be cutting through some bone and you're going to hear it click. And it'll go ahead and sever some of the muscle and some of that bone. I'm going to be cutting through the jaw a little bit. Again, notice I'm not really using the knife. The scissors to work really well here. No matter what size frog you have, I haven't found one that uh, requires anything but scissors. And I'm going to cut way on back on this guy, almost back to the uh, front legs. Opening up the mouth. And sometimes I will very, very carefully take a pin through the very uh, end of the mandible here, poke it through, and barely pierce the chest plate. And what that's going to do is allow the mouth of that frog to stay pinned open while I uh, look at it and label it and point some of the features and parts out. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of the parts and pieces. Uh, with the external, the nostrils, we had external nares. And inside of here, you can see two holes. Those are the internal nares. So they actually have a breathing apparatus to the no nostril entering in through the top of the mouth. You also have this interesting, interesting tongue right here. And this guy is a super carnivore. And as you look at this, you're going to start noticing that just about every part and piece is designed to allow prey to go inside and really discouraging it from being able to come back out. So the teeth, the tongue, everything is a one-way channel. Uh, this thing will fold forward. Sometimes it's got a bit of sticky on it, but it's meant to grab, pull, and bring the prey inside. Uh, you have two sets of teeth here. Uh, around the lip, on the top, if you push down and inside, you're going to feel a very fine serrated edge. And these are called maxillary teeth. They kind of have the feeling of maybe a butter knife. And these are pretty good at grasping. The other set of teeth that most people are very unaware of, and these are my favorite, are called the vomerin teeth. And if you look really closely, you're going to find two little nubs on the inside of the uh, internal nares. And if you take your finger inside, push down, and try and pull back, you're going to notice a really cool thing. And that is that there are literally thousands of tiny microscopic barbs, kind of like Velcro, that are going to keep your finger from actually being able to come back out until you lift it off. These are barbs, kind of like hooks. And they're built into the, uh, the mouth. They're not exactly what we well, really think of as teeth but they definitely play the part. So again, anything, a mouse, another frog, a bird, any prey that he's gonna grab onto, this is gonna be another thing that's going to latch on and uh, kind of inhibit it escaping. So again, top predators as far as amphibians are involved. Uh, you have the esophagus, you have uh, effectively a glottis. Strangely, on the sides, you have uh, two extra tubes. These are the eustachian tubes but that is your basic innards as far as the inside of the frog mouth. Time to open up the belly. We're going to begin by cutting down here close to the cloaca uh, at the bottom of the abdomen. And I'm going to make a small incision with my scalpel, very shallow, and just enough to be able to allow purchase with my scissors. And the cut I'm going to make is from this abdominal cavity back here at the cloaca all the way up through the sternum and uh, through the lower mandible and I'm going to cut all the way through it. You want to be very careful when you do this because it's very easy for you to go through a liver right here or mess up and scramble some of the internal organs. A lot of times my students will use a scalpel or just uh, actually just cut the skin and miss the muscle. So we're going to go through the skin first and then we're going to cut through the muscle layer into the internal cavity and hopefully this will work out well. Uh, being this size, I can go ahead and flip this guy around, right-handed guy, and we'll do the skin first. Shallow, shallow. 
Some specimens will allow this, some of them will not. And I'm just easily cutting through here. If you are having to exert a lot of force, uh, go ahead and take a step back. Perhaps uh, get a little bit of guidance from your instructor. Do not force anything whenever you're messing with these sharp tools. And what you'll notice is that this stuff will peel back. Okay, so I've, I've effectively taken the skin, but when you look under here, I've still got the muscle. So you're looking at the abs, you're looking at the chest of the frog, and it's still intact. So I haven't actually cut into the body cavity yet. I'm going to make a couple more cuts, and the first one's going to be straight across, right there at the legs, the back legs, and down. Okay. And I'm going to do the same for the left side. I'm also going to do this up close to the chest, and I'm going to pretty much try and do it right up underneath the arms so that whenever I'm opening them up, I can go ahead and continue this cut up underneath the armpits. And I'll do that in just a moment. And there's my basic layout as far as the cuts I'm going to make. Start back here where I started my first cut. I'm going to go all the way up through the jawline. And again, I'm going to do this very shallowly. The abdomen is going to be pretty easy, and I'm pulling up with the scissors to make sure that I don't cut into any organs. You will hit a point right about here that you're going to hit what's called the sternum or the breastplate. And you've got the same thing on your chest if you feel it. And this is a bit of cartilage and bone, and it's going to take a little bit more to cut through it. You might hear a snapping noise. Um, you might grit your teeth a little bit. I'm going to cut all the way through that, again being as careful as I can, all the way through the bottom mandible of the frog. And I usually do that just because it's uh, a lot more convenient to go all the way through. I'll go ahead and make my cuts to the side. Again, as always, I'm cautioning you to be as careful as possible. To the other side. and up underneath the arms. And I'm gonna go back over here with uh, the scalpel and go ahead and make these cuts go all the way down because uh, I don't have them going as far as I need them to to get a clear enough window that I really wanna want. So I'm gonna take my scalpel, opening up, make sure that you don't have your fingers in the way. I wanna continue on that cut all the way until I'm almost down to uh, really the very back of the dorsal area of the frog. And do this for both sides, up under the arms. And uh, if you have a sharp knife, which I hope you do, this does not take any effort at all. So pull back a little bit, and it just slices right through. And as you mess with these sharp knives, you'll understand just how important it is, again, to be careful with your cuts, to make sure that you're not going through any of the uh, organ systems and scrambling it before you really get inside. So there you have it. These are your cuts. I'm gonna go ahead and use some pins and uh, I've got it all the way open. And what I'll do is fold this flap of skin and muscle back and put the pin up underneath and underneath the uh, frog there. I'll take my next pin and do the same thing. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of uh, tissue here and there holding on. Shouldn't give you too much of a fight though. Go ahead and pin that up underneath. And a lot of times your, uh, your lab packets will tell you to go ahead and clean the frog out at this time. This does appear to be a male, uh, preliminarily. A lot of times whenever you open this up and it's a female, quite literally it looks like uh, large grains of salt and pepper are just covering the entire cavity. Eggs will be everywhere. Uh, but no eggs. Again, I'm going to stick with thinking that this is going to be a male. I'm also going to go about opening up, and this is what I usually do, is open up the, uh, the front. And I'm going to pull this back, which are the two halves, pull the arms back, and I'm going to actually use my teasers or my probes to spike in and open this area. And this just gives me a wider field of view when I do my dissection. At this point, we are ready to start looking at the parts and pieces and the internal organs. So let's look at this guy internally. First and foremost, 
you'll notice that there are these three extremely large lobes uh, and they are pretty much dominating the body cavity at this point. These are the liver, okay, and there are three lobes of the liver. Uh, one, two, and this third one right here. And if you look up underneath these lobes, you should find attached or very close in proximity a uh, rather round sac. And sometimes it's black, sometimes it's clear, uh, can be empty, can be all the way full. This one's partially full. And this is the gallbladder full of bile. And you'll learn about that in lecture. Uh, we usually have to go about removing this surgically, the liver I mean, just to be able to look at the digestive system and everything else like that. We'll see where it goes. Located above the liver, you're going to see kind of a mess here. It looks like a bunch of extra skin. And if you go ahead and take the skin off, it's called pericardium. Sometimes it's a careful thing. Sometimes you gotta have, kind of rip at it. It's just kind of a saran wrap surrounding one of the most important organs. If you'll see that start to form, you'll see kind of a familiar shape, and that is a heart. It's actually only three-chambered, whereas our uh, mammalian hearts are four-chambered, uh, but that is where the heart's nestled in between the lobes of the liver up front here, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I actually pull these parts uh, over here out of the way. So what I'm gonna do at this time, be able to give myself a little bit more room, is go ahead and surgically remove the liver. And I want to do this very carefully. So pulling it up. There's not much holding it there. And again, since this, since this has been uh, preserved, it's not going to give much of a fight. And uh, there I've got it. Real simple. And we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, again, the heart it's clear, you see that, it's framed very nicely. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other parts and pieces we now have uh, free to look at. You're gonna notice a, almost a whitish down to a yellow or orangish octopus-like structure, and these usually come out of both sides. Uh, you can squish right through them with your fingers. They look really strange, look really foreign. There's not much to them as far as complexity because they're uniform all the way through. But these are called fat bodies. And these are one of the coolest things that I find inside of the frogs. Uh, instead of storing their fat on the outsides like we do to kind of retain heat, they go ahead and actually build the structure out of fat to retain their energy and store their energy. So you'll find two of these, one on each side. Uh, for cleanliness sake, depending on how much he's been eating, a lot of times we'll go and just remove these and you can simply just uh, kind of pluck them off they come right off. And I'll put these to the side so we can uh, go ahead and look at some of the other organs on the inside. Make sure you're not pulling anything uh, extra out though. And that's that. Fat bodies. Pretty awesome. With all that out of the way, we now have uncovered these two dark wrinkly lobes and they look like really large, well, raisins. And if you pull them out, and they'll extend a little bit, you might have wondered exactly where those lungs were. A lot of people opening up the frog first look at the liver that we just removed, and they think that the liver is the lungs, and that is not the case. I would mentioned looking at the uh, external anatomy that they have underdeveloped lungs, and these are it. Okay, very small. They don't do the brunt of the job as far as breathing, but they do allow them to uh, be terrestrial. So this is what they have for lungs. You also, underneath the heart here, have the trachea. This is uh, coming in from the mouth as they eat things, and this tube will extend into the stomach right here. This uh, muscle, and it's usually the largest thing around, smooth, large. If they've been eating anything, obviously there's going to be uh, something inside distended. It will lead from the duodenum into the small intestines, onto the large, and out through the cloaca, and that is the entirety of the digestive system. You'll have a pancreas on the inside, and this one is poorly preserved. Also nestled within all these membranes, you'll see a dark clump, or a dark organ, and that is the spleen, and that's right there. Uh, we removed the, the gallbladder earlier with the liver, 
and this is what's left under here. So look into this and you'll find that. Uh, back behind all this, you're going to find two strange organs. These are dark and flat and usually nestled one on each side of the spine back near the, what we'd say was the uh, back strap. And this right here is a kidney. And on the other side, its counterpart, is the other kidney. Okay? And that is literally the majority of your dissection. Uh, a lot of times we'll get into to further detail as far as skinning and looking at muscle groups. My students also like to attempt to remove or find the brain. And again, with an amphibian, it's not what you would expect. It's very small. It's usually a letdown. It's kind of discouraging. But in order to do that, we'll flip it over. We would cut through the top of the head. And the easiest way is to track the spinal cord through the backbone all the way to it. And it's a uh, very small, it's hard to describe. Yeah, I'd say it looks like a booger. It's very small. Uh, the other neat thing that a lot of students like to do is actually go ahead and remove the eyes. And if they can do this carefully, it's a little bit of dexterity. Also, whenever they cut into the eye, they're going to find a lens and it's going to be a hard ball. Amber, clear, very pretty, uh, something that you would not necessarily uh, expect to find inside of an eyeball. And that, uh, that usually has students enjoying things. You can cut into the heart, looking and feeling uh, the insides of the chambers. A lot of times I'll have them open up the stomach and uh, feel the rugae inside of the intestine sometimes finding parts and pieces of beetles or bones or whatever they've eaten. There's a lot of exploration that can go on whenever you're dissecting these. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, hopefully you've learned a little bit, and uh, whenever you get around to dissections, have fun with it.